You may know uh, that there are certain kinds of injuries uh, I often focus upon, and those are burn injuries and brain injuries. Today in this blog, I would like to talk about burn injuries because they come with a unique set of uh, issues. The pain and suffering is exquisite, the disability is exquisite, and the mechanism of injury, how they were sustained, thermal burns or otherwise, is exquisitely painful. So as in any case, you look at the medical records and you can see the limitations that the burn victim has. It could be that they can't kneel, stand, grab uh, things with their hand or wherever they were burned. And obviously a full discussion of that is important. Uh, you look at, of course, the inpatient hospitalization. Some are in special units, burn ICU units, for example, and they would not be anywhere, but would be in leading, referring, teaching hospitals, uh, such as the Mass General's burn unit. And you get into the circumstances of how they were finally discharged. Some doctors are very concerned to discharge the patient. And one doctor might say to a patient, if you can prove to me you can walk, I'll let you go. After discussing the kinds of surgeries and presenting them in a case or presenting them as part of a settlement demand, you look at the things like, were they, was the client uh, given a pick line, which is reserved for the most seriously injured? Is, is that, uh, that's a central line in how they were treated medically and so forth. Uh, you see if there was a referral made to a burn unit uh, psychiatrist. And then you look at the evaluation. And if it's a prominent hospital with prominent physicians, they will write peer-reviewed journals, will have a lot of work often exclusively in a burn unit, and they will tell you under the AMA, the medical, medical, American Medical Association's guidelines of the person's impairment. And you obviously, as you would with any case, want an up-to-date examination after the, you know, months or years after the accident to get an assessment of just what is that AMA impairment. And you may not even want to show if the case goes to a mediation or a trial the actual burns. After all, your client has been exposed enough, and the client would obviously have been examined by the burn unit uh, doctor who followed him or her, and the client might well have been examined by your adversary. There's no need to have a client disrobe in a courtroom, in my opinion. What are the typical issues of a burn injury patient? There's neuropathic pain, pain that's neurological in nature, and often that's very severe and incapacitating. Uh, the pain might be rated as high as a, a seven or an eight on a one to 10 scale. And there's a whole spectrum from A to D as to how the patient is rated. And D is the worst, and perhaps your client, or perhaps you, God forbid, are in D, the worst of the four classes. And then finally, what limitations does your client have? Is the client able to go back to the kind of work he or she had? Is, are his hands or his legs or wherever he was burned shaky? And will that not permit him to get up on a ladder or something like that? Has sweating been affected? And so on and so forth. And what about the autografting that was done? That is uh, some of the burn surgeries that were done. And you also know, uh, in addition to the AMA impairment, in the various ratings of class A through D, uh, you can just get a sense, really, from the burn unit or burn doctor uh, whether the person is totally disabled from work and what kind of physical incapacity will they have and will it be, as is likely, permanent. And there are also major psychological ramifications but that is the subject for another witness and another blog. Thank you.